Well, speaking of weirdos, right, so if you're if you're a folk songwriter, uh, I'd say you're on the fringe. Can you speak to either being a folk songwriter or being on the fringe? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I feel like I call myself a folk singer for a couple different reasons. Like I'm not within a folk tradition in that I don't know a lot of like traditional folk songs. Um, I know a few, um, but folk in the idea of music that comes from the people, like in a way that is untrained, like that would, I really like resonate with that definition of folk. It's like I taught myself how to play guitar and I taught myself these and made up these songs. And so it's just kind of like the idea of folk art versus like high art. Um, so my music, I think, feels like that. Um, communicating with the other musicians who are trained can sometimes be a little difficult for yeah, me. Yeah. But usually they're game, if I like have a game plan. All right. Like, we're gonna do something that kind of sounds like this, and it's gonna be like this texture, and there's gonna be like these gemstones, and they're like, okay, cool, you know? Right. And, um, and they'll kind of like figure out how to like, you know, make that happen. Um, but I would say we're, we're more on the fringe as far as some of the stuff that we make isn't pretty or palatable. Um, I think it's pretty sad. Some of the stuff could be kind of self-indulgent and yeah. emotional. And, um, I definitely listened to a lot of Bright Eyes when I was younger. <laughs> so that had like some influence on uh -huh. it. Um, yeah, so not traditional folk, but folk in that I am folk, I am a person. Yeah, you know, who yeah. is like making music and has decided that that is an important thing for me and that I want to make music in front of people and I want it to be like kind of this cleaning um, experience of like just providing like this pure energy and hopefully other people are also feeling like cleaned by it and are like resonating with it too. How did you make your way up to the Motor City? What was that like? Um, well, I grew up in Florida, which you were talking about earlier. Yeah. Um, and I moved from there when I was 20 to Michigan, of all places, <laughs> to like outside Detroit area. Um, and I, I mostly, I wanted to get out of Florida. Yeah. And then when I was in Michigan for a while, I kind of wanted to get out of Michigan too. Yeah. But I enjoyed it there, and like I found my way to Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is a really wonderful place. Have you been there? Uh huh. Before? Uh huh. Okay. I've been to the the there's a Buddhist temple up there. Oh really? At least one. We cool. went on a field trip in nice. high school. To the Buddhist temple in Ann Arbor. Yeah, it's. Um, I'm trying to think if I know where that is. It rings a bell. But um, yeah, so I lived in Ann Arbor for a while. Some of my, my best friend Aaron still lives back there. Um, I go and visit about once a year. Um, and I was dating a guy uh, for a couple years there, and we were, I was a sign artist. I was doing sign art for uh, Trader Joe's, and he was a graphic designer for University of Michigan, and we were both just kind of like fed up with our jobs. And we just had a really terrible winter one year, and like Michigan just has like super brutal winters, and there was a period of about a week where we couldn't even see each other because neither of us had cars and Ann Arbor's kind of like this bowl shape. Mm -hmm. And I was like at one end of the bowl and he was like at the other end and you literally couldn't even walk to yeah. the house because it was, it was just so slick. And so we're like, we gotta get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we just started like planning this escape where we would just like get a, a travel trailer and just live in it for like a year maybe come back to Michigan or maybe not so over the course of about six months we researched camper trailers bought one like refurbished it and like Whoa. sold all of our stuff and just like took off and lived in it for about a year yeah and um, just kind of did the perimeter of the US and um, I ended up in San Francisco uh, we ended up splitting up he moved back to Michigan I stayed in San Fran for about a year okay um, and then I moved up here, and I've been here for about four years now. Yeah, it's my life in a nutshell. Right that's there. great. That's great. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to ask you about San Francisco because uh, yeah. I'm going to be spending two days with someone special there this summer, and 
What, what do I need to do while I'm there in San Francisco for two um, days? Um, find the parks. Uh, definitely, of course, Golden Gate Park. Okay. And getting out to the ocean is okay. really important. Um, I lived in the Mission, which, have yeah. you been to the Mission before? God, no. no. It's We're going to stay in the Castro. Okay, awesome. Yeah, one of my other best friends lives in the Castro, so okay. that's really great. Yeah. Um, the mission can be a little more, a little too urban and too gritty for me. Like I really missed green space. Right. One of the reasons why I moved here. So I really tried to get out into like the parks as much as I could when I was there. Um, but the mission is great for food. Yeah. And walking down Valencia, you should definitely walk down Valencia one way and then cross a block and then walk down Mission the other way because it's like a different okay. mission. <laughs> It's like kind of like the hipster mission uh -huh. and then like the more like traditional like Latino mission. Right. But it's like separated by like one block. It's really interesting. All right. But yeah, kind of get a feel for that. And then, all right, so you were in San Francisco for a year and then, then you came up here. Yeah, moved up here. What was your connection to here? Um, one of my really good friends was living here at the time. Um, I also met a guy that was really awesome. So, and we were together for a while, but it didn't work out. Um, but I kind of fell in love with the city. Yeah. And what I like about Seattle is that it's really integrated with green spaces, like the urban and like the rural kind of like are more just interconnected here. Mm -hmm. And um, whereas San Francisco felt a little too urban, and Ann Arbor felt a little too small. Yeah. It's like a connection. Right, like, right. Yeah, between yeah. the two. Such a cosmopolitan, inspiring city here, but uh, it does feel small too at the same time. Like it's a good, it's kind of between these yeah. extremes. It's very neighborhoody here. It's know? super neighborhoody. Yeah. Like I know my neighbors, I know my upstairs neighbors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's really Which cool. was great when uh, I found out where you were because I'm like right down the street from you over at like 12th and Pine. Really? Where I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, I, I got some just basic basic questions here now, um, cool. kind of just for fun, but uh, what are you listening to now? What am I listening to now? Um, let's see, well I just watched um, this movie called Black Orpheus, have you heard of it before? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. No, no yeah, more. it's like the the ancient like Greek story of like Orpheus and Eurydice, but like told through um, in at Carnival in Rio de Janeiro in like 1958. It's oh. super creepy and really beautiful. Um, but there's a lot of I know that like Arcade Fire's last album they pulled a lot of like stuff from Orpheus and Eurydice and like onto that album, and I I still enjoy the hell out of Reflector. I think it's a really amazing album. Yeah. Um, Future Islands um, last album was really really good um, we had so I run this um, uh, music event actually here on my bed um, called Bedroomize Bedroomize okay. yeah it's just like a house show I do it every other month and I invite bands to come and just play like on my bed yeah. and however they can like set up and I move all my furniture out and then I get like 40 or 50 people in here. Holy crap. It's really awesome, which you should totally come to the next I'm, one. I'm into it, yeah. That's it's really great. great. Wow. Like, I've done two so far and the last one was based around um, my friend uh, knew a woman who was on tour named Julia Reed um, who plays violin and was just amazing. Right. Like does a lot of uh, repetition, and I think she normally uses a looping pedal, but she didn't have her looping pedal with her, or it was broken or something, and she was able to just loop and play this stuff like over and over and over again, and like sing this really beautiful, repetitive, almost like um, mantra-like music, and everyone was just crying. Like, yeah. It was so beautiful. So Julia Reed is really awesome, and I got both of her albums, and I've been wearing those out. Yeah, she's really good. And uh, Sharon Van Etten's oh. newest album is really good. Um, the first song, "Afraid of Nothing," yeah, is really awesome. And like the whole, I think like the phrase that she keeps going back is, "I can't wait till we're afraid of nothing." Yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, that's good. I've followed her career a lot, and it's 
been awesome to watch like how brave like she's become with her songs and kind of know a little bit about her personal history and yeah, so she's she's been a big influence on me too. Who are some of the bands that uh, you've shared a bill with here in the past? Or, or um, let's see, who have we played with? Um, friends and family were really awesome. Kind of they have this early Talking Heads kind of feel to them. I think a lot of people compare them to Arcade Fire too. Yeah, yeah. those who you played with at the Crocodile. Right? Yeah, 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 you were there and um, Night Cadet. Who were also there that night, and they're kind of like this uh, queer dream pop band. Yeah. They're really great. Wishbeard, we played with a lot. Um, St. Paul de Vance, we played with. Um, who else? Oh, Golden Space. They're a really great duo here in the city. And, yeah. What Disney character best relates to your music? Disney character. Oh my gosh. Hmm. So, what Disney character would listen to my music? Or. <laughs> if, if you were to superimpose your music over Disney character, what, what would be the best fit of your music oh in Disney? Um, I think that the first character that I go to is the raccoon from Pocahontas, Miko, I think was his name. I'm not sure, but all right, all just right. kind of like this sidekick animal that's yeah. like really happy and like is, you know, trying to keep the main character out of trouble. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> if, you, if you had a hammer, what would you do with it? If a hammer, I'd probably turn it into a piece of sculptural art. Um, you would. <laughs> <laughs> I might not hammer things with it. I might mm -hmm. like, yeah, set it up in an interesting way and take a photo of it or build a sculpture out of it. Who is your daddy and what does he do? Um, my dad is or was a teacher, a special education teacher, and uh, he lives in Alabama. He's retired now, but um, both my parents were teachers growing up. Cool. My mom was math teacher. So. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's interesting having teachers for parents because they're like, don't ever be a teacher. Right. <laughs> They're like, you will be poor and upset all the time. I'm you know like, what's weird is my, my math teacher the other day was saying that there's a shortage of teachers these days, but yeah. they're still underpaid. Yeah, and they work. It's just like a 24-hour job, and they get paid like so poorly. And like, both my mom and dad were special education teachers, and they just like I watched them just kind of like suffer so much like through their whole lives and. Even though I find myself teaching a lot now, like just in my daily life, I feel like I teach people. Um, doing it as a profession, like, it's something I've kind of been just verboten. Like, you can't do it because your parents said no. Right, right. Yeah. Um, all right, well, uh, you got any upcoming shows that you want to plug? Or oh, any, goodness. Any um, going on? What's in the future? For what's going time? on? Uh, I'm going to be recording a demo um, to start sending around to some different labels. That's definitely in the works this summer. Um, I really want to um, experience what it's like to be supported by a label and not have to do everything yourself. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll be recording a demo and, and start to like shop that around in some different places. Um, I'm going to be playing a house show coming up. I don't remember the date. Okay. It's the 23rd um, at my friend Alicia's house. Um, she lives in this really awesome house called Black Cat Manor, where like has a long history of like different musicians living there. Like some members of Fleet Foxes used to live there, like back in the day. And, um, right now, there's a, a number of bands um, that have members that live there, and there's a pretty sweet house. Um, and then we'll be playing for you on yeah. the twenty eighth, yeah. which will be really cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for uh, interviewing me. Thanks for coming out. Or thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thanks for coming to my house. <laughs> yeah, can't wait. Can't wait to have you on the show. So it'll be awesome, man. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Thanks, sir. Yeah. High five. <laughs> uh.